Hi, everybody. Welcome to AITA Pod. I'm Danny Vega, joined by two very special guests. Back on the show, host of the Spiritual Asshole Podcast. Everybody loves this motherfucker. Brendan <laughs> It's Everybody Loves Raymond sequel. Everyone loves this motherfucker. And she's coming back for the second time here. She is the queen of the dating experience. I believe I got in trouble for calling it speed dating. But no, you call you call me this the queen of speed dating, which makes it sound like I just speed date a lot. Just, she's addicted to speed. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. She's addicted to amphetamines. No, she's the dating queen, not herself. <laughs> one who facilitates dating. Evgenia, welcome back to the show. Thank you. You did a great job with my name, by the way. Thank you. I've mastered the first name, and then it's Trembois. It's Tremboise. Tremboise. It is Tremboise. You're totally oh, right. Okay, My family is not French, so we just don't oh. say it well, the French way. And then French people it. do get really upset. So if any French people are listening, I'm really sorry. But now Brendan isn't French, but it is Brendan Fitzgibbon. Fitzgibbons. Fitzgibbons. It's very Irish. So I've actually done, I mean, when you were last on the show, I had only sped date once. Which is where I met Brendan. I did one of your dating experiences. We hit it off hard. We hit it off. Um, did you notice the chemistry between the two of us during the event? I did, yeah. Yeah. I specifically set the two of you up on purpose. So. <laughs> you nailed it. You nailed it. Um, but yeah, I actually have some notes from some other speed dating events, which these were months ago now, but... Maybe God. you're the speed dating king. I think I am. I, I mean, think so. there is a guy actually. You should actually start a blog just about your dating experiences. There, there's a guy named uh, a guy I met. I won't say his name, but he had done uh, 16. Steve Aoki. Speed, yeah. Steve Aoki is I feel out like on 16 the speed isn't dating. crazy. Is it not okay? 16 Seems in like a, a month. Yeah, but like 16th and 16 in general. I think I hit nine. I've in hit a month? Nine. Yeah. Okay. No, just nine total. How many I'm have you at done? Two. Your two. I did one was a colossal failure, and then yours was fun. So, yeah, hers was totally a nice vibe. We love Kamiya dating. Yeah. Check it out if you're in the Los Angeles area, and you do other cities as well. Yeah, I'm in SF, in all of, basically all of California, and then throughout the U.S. I do some pop-ups, too. And let's get that mic. I do some pop-ups, too. There we go. That was a weird voice. Um, where do you think the weirdest place to do speed dating would be? Staten Island? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my initial thought when you said that was like venues, not like cities. Oh, yeah. Well, give me a venue. Yeah. Um, what would be the funniest venue? Well, to do I actually, thing? okay, this isn't like, I'm not going to say this is weird. This is fun. I'm doing an emo speed dating. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. So that'll be like a, like a little niche thing. But um, I don't know. What would be a weird Emo venue? speed dating. So is it like no listening more, to yeah. sad tunes? Is everyone looking like The Cure? Yeah, so everyone Sick. can like dress up kind of like emo yeah. 2000s grunge. That's um, great. But it is, there's gonna be live music afterwards and they're gonna be doing, it's like a metal or like a, a uh, that's yeah, like fun, a metal man. Band. I'm into um, that. I like, I like, I, 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 I'm curious about how like it mixes with other events. I still haven't been on your scavenger hunt, so, I, so fun. I need to do that. But yeah, so I, um, Brennan always likes to hate on my self development updates, but. I stopped watching porn in February of 2023. Who's counting? Me. And I brought this up at one of your events. I I don't I forgot how I it was you actually well, you, you brought porn up question. porn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You brought up porn, you nasty girl. <laughs> and or did someone else bring it up? I think no, someone ma'am. Listen to this because people get to write in questions and I pick it out of a bowl. You had good questions oh, though. People wrote those in? Some, oh, I yeah, don't think sometimes I Sometimes we do that. that. So at the one oh. that you're talking about. We did. That was what happened. Um, the managers of the bar uh, chose the conversation uh, topics, but I think it's fun to get a little spicy sometimes. Well, yeah, and I was so excited because, you know, it's not something I can just randomly bring up. Like, I don't watch porn. And then the girl rejected it. She goes, I don't trust any man who doesn't watch porn. And I was like, I can't believe I've, really? I've gone through this only to be denied flatly by this woman. <laughs> Brutal. Do you think she was saying that she didn't trust that you don't watch? Yeah, she or? didn't believe that was a lie. Okay. I yeah, I mean, I don't believe you either. It sounded like she was saying, <laughs> I don't trust a man who doesn't watch porn. Like, that's a red flag if you don't watch porn. No, she didn't believe me is, is how I interpret it. You don't believe me either? I think a really bad venue would be in Arby's. 
<laughs> you know what? I actually almost went to Arby's the other day. <laughs> That's also go. I'm not tired I've, of it. I've never. I don't think I've ever been. I oh, you gotta go. You gotta go. I was you gotta driving. Go. I was, no, you I was gotta driving go. from the Bay to back to LA, and I wanted go. to get some food. And I was like, should I just like try Arby's for the first time? <laughs> you got it's to. Great. Yeah. And I didn't. So now I'm regretting it. But the pictures they had were like just like. It looked like roast beef from Safeway. Mm. I mean, that's, yeah, it's worse it's than that. It's basically <laughs> shitty roast beef with a lot of cheese, nacho it's, cheese. It's gross, but you got to do it. All right. I will say, to tie this all in together, I think everybody should try speed dating once. I think everybody should. I give everybody mad props for going to your events. It's really easy to hide behind your cell phone. Props to everybody who's doing this. I totally agree. And yeah. if you're nervous about speed dating, I'm actually putting on a magic show for singles as well. Oh, that's what? awesome. Yes. Yeah, so you're going to be seated just at group tables um, watching a magic show from magicians at that special private magic club in LA that I legally no can't joke. say. Oh, we can't say but, that. Okay. Yeah. Are the magicians also oh, single? Go. They're like, for this next trick, <laughs> you get my number. <laughs> Can I get the invite on that? How does yeah, that yeah, work? I'll, I'll that sounds lit. Yeah. Um, so Good for I you. Had, that's great. I had another botch. At one of your events, You're that's not botching. on you. Also, so what's you're a botch? The only person I know who says botch. What does botch mean? Can botch like an error. Oh, you fucked it up. Is that not a word? No, it's Did a word. I, I've just never heard it as a thing. Botch. Carry out a task badly or carelessly. No, you're, it's it's a word, and I know that it's a word. I just I don't know anybody else. Then I want to bring that. something up to for you after this about our event. Botch. botch. Badly, a bungled or badly carried out task or action. It sounds like the botch is the type of kind of porn that Danny watches. Botch porn? <laughs> yeah. This, here's it's some botch porn for ball. you. Botchy ball. Oh, botchy ball, botchy yeah. Ball. Yeah, the old guys like that in Jersey. So this girl, she she was she was cool. She had a really funny so the the prompt was so I blame you now. The prompt that you <laughs> Everything gave. Everything is always my fault. Your terroristic prompt now. Apparently this is Chris submitted was the question was when was the last time I want your answer to this, Brennan. When was when was the last time a like a stranger did something nice for you? Does that ring? Oh, your bell? it's beautiful. Or maybe I think it was what's the nicest thing a stranger? Sure. Great. Yeah. What's the nicest yeah. thing? Okay. I have one. Okay, let's hear it. I was in London, completely lost. I was 20. A guy got off the bus to walk me to where I needed to go, and it was not his stop. Like mm. that's astonishingly nice. I've had that. Yeah, that's always really nice. Well, you're you're a woman. You're attractive. You're an attractive. Woman, <laughs> yeah, we don't. Is give it a different? Fuck. Yeah, it's no. wildly <laughs> different. You could be. Getting yeah, one everyone's two. like, you're on your own, bro. Get out there, <laughs> have fun. It, but it's it's a what I was saying though is that it is a really I think it's really kind when that happens. It's so, so nice. I mean, I have more, but that was, yeah, that's one that pops in my head. So this girl's story was she was on an airplane, and I guess she was like a nervous flyer. And so this man perceived that she was freaking out and then uh, talked to her yeah. for the flight. And it was kind of a funny story, I guess. I can't remember. She, like, retransmitted the story or whatever. But she really ate up all the time. <laughs> and so then I wanted to go into my story. Um, so I was, like, kind of go getting into it. And then we ran out of time, and I was, like, being, like, I didn't want to accept that. <laughs> and then my story also didn't work at all because nobody's nobody's ever done anything nice for me. I, I literally had no answer. I'm sure that's not true. Wait, wait, wait. You were upset that you didn't get to say your answer, but then you didn't have an answer. I, I had the inverse answer. <laughs> so the how douchey is this? My answer was me doing something nice for someone, my crazy old lady neighbor who a lot of the listeners know, Dora. Wait, okay. I inverted it and went with, when was the last time I did something nice for a stranger? And anyway, it just like it went on so fucking, oh, <laughs> and like people were like looking at us like, okay, like we switch because you know you rotate yes. people, and so she was still going. I was, was going. Still going. Oh, I was going. <laughs> she was up all the time. And then it was like that kind of thing where like the whole next speed date, I was just looking at this woman like I didn't tell my fucking story. Oh my god, <laughs> it just like the roof. And then this girl didn't match with me, and ugh. you got to get to that punchline. It sucks when you can't. It really was a big box. You got to get to the punchline. No, there was no punchline. It wasn't even the right story. But you know, there's an arc. There's an ending. Thank you. Okay, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, it would have yeah. helped maybe to get it off. But anyway, you know what though? Here's the thing. Here is my advice. Yeah, let's hear it. Next I'll take time, it. this you is great. Just been like, oh. Oh, the round's over. I really want to tell you this story. I'll find you afterwards so I can finish it. Now you have an in to talk to her afterwards. Wow. You didn't make it weird. You're not distracted for the next round. This is your fault. 
This is your fault. Everything. Your prompts need to have a thing that specifies how long people can talk for because she over talked. The specification. Well, OK, do you when you go on a date with someone or have any kind yeah. of conversation, do you put are you like, all right, you have three minutes now. Yeah. I'm not even joking that I have that impulse a lot when people over talk. It's like very triggering for me. All right, I'll be careful. You better be careful not to over talk today. And no, I'll you be guys careful. are good. You I've guys barely are, said anything so far. He's good. At, he's good. Okay. That's why he's here. Oh, good. Okay, so my question to you is because, so what happens at these events we should tell for the most part, as far as I know, is you write down three people that you were interested in, right? That's not, you can write down more than three. Can you can you? write down more. Yeah. Than three. Oh, you can. <laughs> By okay, the way, I, I was talk. joking. I liked your advice. I thought your advice was great. I know. That was it was a amazing. Joke. Okay. I just, I just wrote down Danny Vega okay. three times. Thank you. I love you. And, uh, of the three I wrote, one, I matched with one. But I felt like I had a pretty good vibe with one of the girls I did write down. I wouldn't I make that I up. I wanted you guys to be a Yeah, fight. you saw that, right? I, I like that a lot. So my you. question, and it was all, it's all she good. She didn't match you? No. So my question I'm to you is, how beautiful. often does that happen? Are girls not writing as much matches as guys? What's what, How often are you seeing it? What's the shake, shake out here? I'd love um, to know. I, ha I definitely have had the experience before of men like not believing me. <laughs> like, oh my God. No, I believe I totally like, believed. You. Like that they didn't get that. They were like, no, no, no. Yeah. She liked me. And I was like, she didn't. <laughs> oh like, shit. No, they no, really no. say that. They're like, yeah, wow. no, I, I promise you she did. <laughs> and I was wow. like, wow. And it, like it's happened a few times. Um so so like yeah, that happens. And I I I do think it comes from like women when they are like smiley and like having a good time and mm. engaging with you, you just take that as um, interest. And I think anybody would, right? Like if a guy yeah. was doing that to me, I would also take that as interest. Yeah. And and actually because of this, I think I have I myself have gotten just like less flirty of, of like a personality in general because like I'm like, I don't want to lead anyone on. I don't want anyone to think that. Oh, right? um, interesting. And I think like women who have that, which I did used to have more of like that kind of like Pers bubbly personality. You, every, everyone just thinks ever, like she's always flirting with them all right. the time when she's not. She's just being like friendly. But I also yeah. think like it comes from like women kind of being taught to be people pleasers. So we're always just trying to make people comfortable around us and like happy around us. And then that comes off as flirting as well. Oh man, she was just people pleasing. That's even worse. Yeah, she you just made like me. You just made me feel worse. No, she was <laughs> laughing a lot though. I that think doesn't. Yeah, she, I'm, I'm and... sure she was having a good time. But like. You know, the same way that you're having a good time with Danny, but I guess you guys probably aren't like hooking up. We are. Okay. We, we are. We have been. Uh, I've been. I've done this podcast so much since then. Um, but okay. Has, but my, the second question: Do you think that guys write down more interest than girls after each uh, date, or is it about yeah, equal? Yeah, I feel like. I feel like. There's usually. Not this doesn't always happen, but occasionally there are like a couple of standouts from each gender that people mm. are like most interested in. Mm. We don't need to bring the conversation back to me. Yeah, it's usually Danny whenever he's there. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Couple of standouts. That makes yeah. sense. I mean, I have had some good runs though. I have had some good runs. Yeah, I, I think mean, for I've... second event, even the three of mine, I think, and I think at the second one you had. A ton of interest. The thing wow. is, if I'm now, I've you know, obviously, I have. I'm. I, I think I'm a brown belt. I don't. I don't know how yeah. karate works. But if I'm lazy, I'll just ask them questions the whole time, like short questions. And I don't have to talk. Um, but anyway, I want to ask you. I think I did a pretty good bit. Slash, it was a flirt. I I'm guilty. I put your name. I put her name in on the matches. <laughs> <laughs> how many people have done that bit? Oh, that's great. Okay, this was my story that I was gonna share. For the private listeners, but I can just share oh, it here. It, okay. it has to do with that. It's a oh. crazy story. Should I share it? Yeah. I can. It's, it's, it's going, this is going on the main, but we're know, going to crazy town. Yeah, Let's do I can it. Share it. I'm excited. Um, you should be a paid OnlyFans subscriber on AITA pod to hear this story, but Patreon. we're giving a freebie. Patreon. Patreon. Not OnlyFans. <laughs> oh, no, it's <laughs> it is. Brendan's page. That's just Danny. Um, okay. So I had this one guy. He, Submitted his form, and he wrote, um, the only person I really wanted to date was you, but I would be open to being friends with these women. He wrote that in the... Yes. <laughs> You're only supposed to write <laughs> names for the whole story. And so I 
just I just ignored it. I just didn't do it because yeah. like he didn't have any matches if he didn't if he just wrote them as friends. And I con- I almost considered it as just like you didn't submit your form in a way. OK. Um, and I actually I do think, to be fair, I did mean I think meant to let him know he had some misconnections because he had a couple of misconnections. Yeah. Um, and I think I just got sidetracked or something. Mm. He followed up with me via text because he this was my fault. I had given him my personal cell phone number because I was following up on just he was being difficult to like nail down for something for a question I had. And so he followed up my personal cell and I didn't respond to that because I was like, okay, this needs to become more professional of like, I'm not going to respond. He was like, did I have any, basically he said, did I have any matches? Meaning are we a match? Cause that was the only person Mm. you put down. So I didn't respond to that. And he reported me to his bank. (laughs) Oh my God. What the fuck? (laughs) Yeah. So he like marked the transaction as fraudulent? Yes. Oh my yes. God. That is so freaking lame. This is why we can't have nice I things. I can't believe you would tell my listeners <laughs> you did that. No. Wow. I was like, great idea. That, okay. <laughs> I'm actually curious because I'm like I'm a big chargeback advocate. It wasn't a credit card though. It wasn't it was a uh debit card. And I'll tell you more about charge packs later but oh, okay yeah we can have a different conversation well no that. how did it play out i'm just curious did you have um, to eat it or is it did you have to like litigate like how what happens? i did so i sent in like photos of him at the event i sent him oh you had photos of yes. him at the event bro yes. you got rocked in court yeah um so anyways don't do that to small businesses is kind of the main the wow main story. holy shit wow that's so like but also don't be a man who like gets so angry about being rejected that you like try and take revenge in such a stupid, petty, fraudulent way because he was fraud. the one who was doing performance. Okay, fraud. so on that note, have you guys heard about this? This happened to one of my friends. She dated this guy for a while. She dumps him. He like two months later invoices her for their dates. I always see things seen like that, that on, on like Instagram. Yeah. This was a long time ago though, before it started becoming a thing. This is yeah, like pre-internet. I think they actually went to court. Which is hilarious. Or he tried to take her to court for the money. Like it's small absurd. claims. <laughs> it's such a waste of time. You know, Shannon was a big, is a big, like, men should pay. And this is what I've realized. I'm happy to pay. This is what I've realized. It's because dating yeah. culture has changed so much. Yeah. Like, if I saw a girl and I wanted to take, like, a friend or, like, maybe someone I kind of knew or even a referral, like, you know, Evie I would trust your judgment. I would, of course, I'm glad to pay. I think the issue is that now there's like these dates that are like so, there's so little information yeah. that it's hard for me to want to take, I feel like I'm taking a risk. Dating app dates. Yes, I, I, yes. I, I, I do understand why there's like, because it's almost like not even a first date. It's just like a first meeting. Yes. yes. Thank so I, you. I understand why there would be like hesitancy. Yeah. But I also like, I think for the most part, not every woman feels like feels this way, but I think for the most part, you are going to possibly turn her off if you don't. I think almost every woman secretly feels that way. Even and if it's a meeting. Well, are you calling it a meeting? Maybe that's what that <laughs> is. I like to call a meeting. But also, this is what I think. I think Setting the mood. I think... Stick to coffee dates, right? Which you probably are doing anyways because you don't drink. And, yeah. like, if you can't afford to buy someone a $6 coffee, then just don't date right now. No, I mean, I've told you. I'm kind of, like, not – I mean, I, I'm excited to do more of your events because they're awesome. But for the most part, I'm really minimally dating. Yeah. I don't, like – I believe social connections are the best way to go. Organic connections. You know, Brendan and I are having a beautiful relationship now. And, it, like, life we is joined a museum. ebb and flows. Sometimes yeah. you're, like, less – interested in like pursuing dating and sometimes you are and like you kind of have to go with where you're at in your life um but in terms of like paying specifically like yeah i think i just think in the beginning it's just so much cleaner if the guy just pays and shut the fuck up about it man it's yeah. just fine. Well, I'm not doing the updates. I mean, big tech, there's actually, this is what I'm learning. Big tech has a bias against five foot eight men. Women in the real world, I'm finding, love my height. They, they think it's beautiful. Are you talking about the algorithm hates you? The algorithm. <laughs> yeah, God, here think, we go Mark with the algorithm. I do think, like, y- you probably do do better in person because, I like. I do way better. Yeah. You know? I do way better. So I'm done with the apps. But. We love the speed date. We recommend Camilla dating. I really recommend it, man. I think it's a really good exercise for everybody to grow. 
like put yourself into a somewhat uncomfortable situation, you will feel good. And I think a big thing too is it creates an, a, a sense of abundance, which I guess women mm-hmm. have. But for for my boys out there, you know, yeah, to not. I actually feel like men have way, way more abundance than women do. Yeah, but go I, on. Like, there's so many beautiful women. I mean, look at Danny. <laughs> He's beautiful. I, I, we, I just, we, yeah, what? I don't know. What are you saying? I Women think, are inundated with male attention. Isn't that sort of a... I mean, no, I mean, dude, almost every here. girl I know, and I have a lot of girl comma friends, thinks that dating out here is hard and there's no good men. But I also think that that's a self-fulfilling pr- prophecy, man. That's just not that true. there's no good men. Yeah, that's okay, not... Okay, that's okay. not Statistically, not possible. Well, there's more women. There's more. There's sorry. Yes. There's more single men in LA. In but New I'm York, saying it's the opposite. There's more single women. I'm saying no good men. Come on, they're out there. That's all I'm saying. Call me. <laughs> Either way, I like the speed dating. And yeah, I love the sorry the dating experiences because it gave me a sense of like there are a lot of people. And you know, I, at one of the events I killed, I have also bombed at some of the events, and that's sometimes. I didn't realize that we were performing, but okay. For me, it's everything's a performance. a performance for Danny. I got a kill. I was there for the experience, and because I had such a bad first time doing it, I did it at this event downtown, which was really really not bad. mine. That's just not yours. <laughs> oh, was really downtown. really really bad. It, comically bad, like funny bad. Like, like it's actually funny what happened. Um, I was like, let's see how this goes, and it was great. And I was like, oh, great. So yeah, I'm 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 so happy you did because that's I'm so happy it brought you into my life. We reconnected, yeah. That's yeah. the thing. Also, you never know who you're gonna meet. You never know what it's gonna lead to. Exactly. Cool you could, yeah, exactly. Like you could actually meet at both times. I did it. I met really cool guys. <laughs> <We're> just, <laughs> oh, really? Both times. Yeah. It's pretty who, funny. Who the fuck is this other guy? <laughs> so wait, am I to understand then the club of people who have written your name into the form is me and the Frank the fraudster <laughs> piece of shit? That's, That's the club I'm in now. No, surely other people have done it. Um, honestly, I would say like yes, but not a lot. Like not I feel lot. like people are usually pretty like kind of like I don't want. Well, people usually ask me in person. They're like, "Are mm. you dating here? Like, yeah. are you mm. on the dates?" Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. I get much more often than like writing me in the form afterwards. Got it. Got it. Oh, great. So it's a hacky <laughs> bit on top of it. So I just bombed all the way through. <laughs> oh, that was great, bro. Good job. Thanks, man. All right. Well, we're gonna do some dating stuff here. Um, I'm pretty excited about these. Um, our second story, AITA for telling my friend she's delusional about her dating prospects. Oh boy. Please rate, review, subscribe. Join us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash A-I-T-A pod. Over 200 bonus episodes. Every single episode ad free. Submit on our subreddit. Reddit.com slash R slash A-I-T-A pod. Let's get this show on the road. A-I-T-A for thinking I was exclusive with a girl I'd been dating for almost 10 months. (laughs) I've been dating Elle for just under 10 months. Truly amazing. And I've fallen for her hard. I guess we've never formally talked about being exclusive. I honestly had to think back. But she always says things like, when we get married and our kids will be geniuses that I think are sweet. And I thought were a sign of us being in a committed and exclusive relationship. The other night I went out to dinner with friends to a really cool bar slash restaurant. I could see Elle inside, but I don't think she saw me. She was with another guy. I know she comes from a family with like 42 cousins, all of whom live locally and says she hangs out with them all the time. And the guy had more than a passing resemblance to her. So I figured that must be what was going on. I plan on going over and saying hi when a lull happened at our table. But in that time, I saw the dude like pin her wrist to the table with his hand and she was trying to pull away. Then he tried to forcefully grab her behind the neck and pull her in for a kiss the hell i lost my shit and went charging inside and sort of grabbed the guy's wrist and arm and told him to leave her the f alone l screamed something like holy shit what the fuck are you doing i was like i'm helping you she said she was just flirting with him and they were together at that point i was like what in the fuck are you talking about we're dating she said that yes we're dating but she's still dating other people (laughs) i was so freaking embarrassed because the entire restaurant was staring and i wanted to crawl into a hole and die (laughs) <laughs> I left without paying the bill. I just sent my friends money on Apple Pay. <laughs> Thanks. Well, for this is an Apple Pay commercial. Thanks, I've never. Heard thanks anyone, for that plug. I've never heard Apple anyone, Pay plug. I've never amazing. heard anyone use Apple Pay. Just try out Apple Pay. <laughs> and got an Uber and went home and figured out that was that. Figured I'd never see her again. Well, I took it to the Sharks game, and Elle was supposed to go with me, but I just wanted to wallow. 
sure enough, she showed up the exact time we agreed, decked out in blue and black, complete with her shark pasties so she could flash the camera. <laughs> oh my God. What? She basically just said, hey, I need you to know I really like you, but I'm still seeing other people. I asked her, I thought we were exclusive. She said, if she chooses me to be exclusive, I'll know. But I acted like a real asshole at the restaurant the previous night. I asked what the deal was with the grabbing, and she said, that's me and Ken's love language. Oh, God. She asked if I could be cool, so I said, yeah. The game was fun, <laughs> and she acted as if nothing whatsoever happened. It was like the same super cool, fun, loving girl she had always been. I felt like there was a 2,000-pound weight on my back. Tell me find some clarity. Was I the asshole for assuming we were exclusive? Any idea for how I acted at the restaurant? Kind of juicy. You got to uh, talk about the part where he said, uh, in Ken's love language, great, I know another guy's name. Oh, <laughs> yeah. so he, funny. He doesn't want to know Ken's name. I, I mean, guess. who wants to know Ken? Who wants to see Ken? Did did I miss how long they have been dating? Ten months. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I I'm, I'm, I don't know what you're going to say, Evgenia. <sighs> I have really mixed feelings on the whole exclusive thing like I do think it needs to be a conversation like yeah. a thousand percent and I think I remember I listened to this podcast episode about non-monogamy and they were saying how like in that community people actually tend to communicate even more than like traditional yes. Yes. Um, monogamous couples because like things aren't assumed and so right. they have to have these really open conversations and create their own rules so I do think that like monogamous couples and people dating wanting to date monogamously should kind of adopt more of that strategy of communication. Um, I don't really fault him for like in his head thinking like, of course we're yeah. exclusive. It's been 10 months. Like mm. I think anybody would feel that way, but also like, why didn't you say anything? Like, why didn't you guys have this conversation? Like they're both kind of in the wrong here. I think mm. like, I think, I think the crazy thing was, like, because he's asking two different questions, right? He's saying, am I the asshole for assuming we're exclusive, but also am I the asshole for how I reacted? Mm -hmm. Like, the reaction of, like, attacking a man at a restaurant is so wild to me. Because, like, I think a sane person would have just been, like, if anything, be like, hey, is everything okay? Not, like, go immediately into sure. attack mode. Sure. I think he made, uh, would have raised an eyebrow when uh, he found out that she had shark pasties. Well, that was after. That's, but I'm just saying that's kind of a significant that thing. A red I'm flag sure for you, a pasty? if a girl had a shark, San Jose sharks, I assume, right? I don't know. Yeah, is a pasty a, a nipple cover? Yeah, the cover of the nipples for a hockey team. I would ask some questions. She was ready to flash. The I would think that this is maybe not an exclusive kind of gal. She if, you got, if, she got, if she's got the shark pasties, dog. You know, it seems like she's into some kind of dominant submission stuff with good old, what's his name? Ken. 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 Um, you know, I, I think I think here's the thing. When I when I flip the genders, I'm like, it, it does make me feel a little bit like, ooh, you know, because I'm like, God, this bro is kind of, I mean, she is kind of sub-communicating things that do hint at exclusivity, such as when we get married. This tends to be a progression that follows exclusivity, and our kids will be geniuses. But, I, I mean, I got to say, I, I do think I, I do think an explicit conversation is needed. And I, and I guess even if I do flip the genders, I'm kind of like, yeah, but honey, like you can't just assume that he's exclusive to you. Yeah, it's like shitty, but not wrong, if that makes sense. It's shitty on behalf of the person who's not saying it. It's shitty on both of them because like neither yeah. of them had the conversation, right? So it's like it's shitty on him because he assumed and it's shitty on her because she kind of was leading him on as well. So I, that's why I think it's a bit shitty on both sides for just that aspect of it. I also don't know like how old this guy is, but if you're young and you're like filled with passion and you love this girl and you see her at a restaurant with another guy, all kind of rationale gets thrown out the fucking window. Do you know what I mean? Well, he's kind of like pinning her too. I mean, yeah, I, feel... I think I would have flipped shit too. I don't know that I would have grabbed. Did he grab the guy? Yeah. He like game was try to interfere physically. I, I am. I mean, so here's I, I was in an exclusive thing and then people were like, that's your girlfriend. So here's a question for you guys mm. is exclu to me. Exclusivity is pre girlfriend. Oh, I thought it was friend. the same thing. I thought See, exclusivity. That, no, equals that's one camp. 
Ooh, yeah. One camp. Like I just saw, I didn't know there was another option. To me, we can be exclusive, but you're not my girlfriend yet. To me, I will ask specifically oh, if you want to be my girlfriend. Adding a step, Danny. So, okay. Brennan, we're exclusive, but you're not my boyfriend. Fine, that's fine, dude. Yeah. Ebony, what say you? I Yeah, I know that people have done it both like that way where it's like we're exclusive, but not in a relationship. Personally, I think it's dumb. Um, I don't think there's a point to that, but some okay. people just do it that way. Well, no, I'm not saying we're not in a relationship. I'm just saying girlfriend to me is sort of a, you know, a title. Right. But the reason I think it's personally dumb is because it's like, okay, you're all, you're blocking yourself off now from other options, but you're not fully committed to like being in a relationship. Well, it's a, a series of phases. It doesn't have to be. Like it's a weird, it's a weird phase to me, but I know people who do it that way and or have done it that way if it feels right. I just love it, too, because I've, like, dated girls out here within, like, one second after we kissed. She's like, what are we? <laughs> and these guys are 10 months in, still trying to figure it out. I get it, though. I mean, I, I think the other thing is to give Elle some grace here. We don't know everything about her. Totally. You know, and we also don't know the frequency level because I'm like, yeah, if you were seeing each other weekly for 10 months, I'm like, damn, that really is pretty brutal. If Elle is just like, yeah, you're no end to me. But if they're seeing each other like monthly, like it's kind of like, well, bro, it sounds like this girl like sometimes hangs out with you. I mean, the marriage thing makes me think that it's frequent, right? Someone who you're hanging out once a month. If you're hanging out with somebody once a month, they're like, when we get married, I, I got some know, questions. Though. Man, some people are just flirtatious like that. Like, I mean, the, our kids will be geniuses. That is a pretty high level flirt, but I'm kind of into that. <laughs> I feel like you would like this girl. Oh, I love, oh my God. I love women like this. A so pasty sharks it. fan. Great. Yes, absolutely. I love it. She sounds so fucking hot to me. Even the fact that she won't commit to me is attractive, but I wouldn't be like this guy like me. Low key. Denny likes toxic. Mm, sounds great. I love it. Actually, my brother made me censor a joke today. I'm going to oh. tell you guys. Was he here? No, he texted me and he's like, you got to pull this. I oh, think I this is a pool. He said, this is a Gen Z advocacy. I tweeted that, or I, what, what is it called? Reels. Is your Reeled. brother Gen Z? Yeah. Well, he's cost, he? 27. Okay. <laughs> so cool. the joke is my friend, my friend says he likes mixed girls. And I was like, yeah, I'm into that too. He means like interracial. And I was yeah. like, I'm into that too. Not like the race thing, just like girls who are bipolar, borderline, like mixed up girls. I thought it was cute. I've been getting a laugh on stage. And then he's like, oh, That's... you were going to do that on set. I put it on, on reels. Stage. I've done oh, it on okay. stage and it's, oh, okay. it's gotten a good laugh. Yeah. And then I put it on reels and my brother's like, you're going to get canceled for that. <laughs> and so then I freaked out and deleted it. Uh, it oh, is that problematic? Your brother's overprotective. I don't really think so, but you're asking the wrong guy. What do you think? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Nope. Yo, I got fact checked <laughs> during my set for saying Kamala's name wrong. How'd you say it? Com no, sorry. I just, Kamala. Yeah. It's Kamala. I was saying it's Kamala. Kamala. I was yeah. saying Kamala. And like three girls started yelling her name at me. And I was like, I couldn't see them. And I wish I could in hindsight do that moment over again. Because I'd be like, I guarantee those are three white girls. <laughs> you know they were. They were absolutely three white girls of the 24 to 26 range with opinions and ready to shoot me down. And it's totally stopped the momentum of my set. And I was just like, how was I saying it? And I was like, fuck, how do I come back from here? I wanted to like say some shit back, but you know that moment where it's like, you also can't attack. You got got. Yeah, you can't you attack. Got, I can't attack three women. She's the first woman present, bro. Get it right. But come on. It's, it's I hard. still have it's it hard. hard. One more time, I, say it again. Kamala is. Kamala. It's Kamala. 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 It's Kamala. So you say calm first. Kamala. Kamala, yeah. Mamala. It. It's always good Kamala. practice to like Kamala. make sure that you got you get names right though too. I know, but like I I really didn't mean to do it and I was trying to say it right. It's still like, yeah, but you did you did a good effort. But guys, listen, Am honestly, asshole? the more we talk through this, and you know, Evie might be saying, Oh, Danny likes toxic girls. Well, you know what? I do, and I'm defending <laughs> Elle. In my view, Elle, you know what? Maybe what she did was deceiving, but I, I am not ready to convict. All we've got against her, in my mind, is our kids will be geniuses. I see her as very flirtatious. She's a big old flirt, and that is not a sin. We're not hearing anything else that indicates that there was a commitment besides this flirtatious, ridiculous quote. And for these reasons, I think OP made an ass out of himself. Now, I'm not trying to ding him either. I think he I think he gets time served. He gets time served. He made an ass out of himself at the restaurant. I got no problem with him for these reasons. ATA for thinking I was exclusive with the girl. I've been dating for almost 10 months. I'm saying no assholes here. Crazy as it may be.
I don't think he's an asshole. Yeah, I could say no assholes here. I also don't think he's an asshole. I don't think he's an asshole for thinking he was exclusive, but I do think he was an asshole for his reaction at the restaurant. Because, but he really thought that she was in danger. Did he? I like think so. I he think, was like pinning her. I mean, that's somewhat unusual. Yeah, I think. But I think like stepping in and saying, "Hey, is everything okay here?" would have been adequate. Whereas what he did, he tried to. He, okay, so the guy Ken forcefully grabbed her behind the neck and pulled mm. her in. I lost my shit, went charging inside, and sort of grabbed the guy's wrist and arm and told him to leave her the fuck alone. Yeah. I guess. I mean, I feel like I, I, I feel like I can meet you, but then I don't feel like he deserves additional shame because like having the whole restaurant stare at you and be like, bruh. <laughs> this is like every 1980s rom-com unfolding before our very eyes. But if his question- Ken, get your is, hands off my girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if his question is just, am I the asshole for thinking we're exclusive? I wouldn't give him an asshole. I think we're all lined up then. Reasonably so. You're doing the best you can, bro. Just Guys. relax a little. Chill out. I mean, I, he still went to the game with her, too. He's like, yeah, I love it. He's like, what up, the fuck's but... going on? He's like, we're still dating. and She's over right now. <laughs> she's got pasties on. She's at my I'm house. Good. We're having a great time. You know what I mean? That's what I'm trying to say. These girls are really fun, so why not? Uh, guys, please rate, subscribe to us on Patreon, patreon.com slash A-I-T-A pod. Over 200 bonus episodes. Every single episode ad-free. Join me and Brendan on OnlyFans, onlyfans.com slash Brendan Den. Great. Just kidding. Thank you. Have you ever done an OnlyFans? Would you be in an OnlyFans video? Of depends on what it is. I know. No a lot face. Of, no face. Depends on what I'm doing. I wouldn't. Am I reading? I yeah, I sure. I I'll read a book. I don't. I don't want. I don't want that to go out. Am I cooking? I feel like I share enough of myself that the world doesn't need naked Danny Vega. I think that the world will be okay. There's mm. two hours of content going out minimum a week. Cuba you know? needs you. Cuba. Yeah. <laughs> Cuba needs you. All right, Evinia, are you ready to read this? I'm so ready. Here we go. AITA for telling my friend she is delusional about her dating prospects. I, 26F, have a friend. I'll call her Lisa. Mm. Also 26. For years, she and I were the single ones amongst people we knew and would, we would commiserate with each other. I actively avoided relationships while she dated a lot, but neither of us had met the right person. I met my boyfriend nearly a year ago, and that means Lisa is the only single person in our group of acquaintances, which she talks about often. I'm the only one. <laughs> the thing about Lisa is she has very high standards. Standards are great, and it's not that I think she should settle, but I do think she is unrealistic. Because of the job I used to do and my background, I move in the same circles as the guys she says are her type— and in my experience, she's not the type of girl they're likely to go for. Obviously, this is a generalization, but I think I've met enough of these guys to see a pattern. I've never told her this because I didn't see the need or benefit to either of us. I just listen and try to be there for her as a friend. Recently, we were having drinks and Lisa was talking about how she hasn't had any success online dating. She said all the guys wanted a hookup and nothing more, or she was constantly messaged by guys she wasn't attracted to or who didn't meet her minimum standards. I tried to comfort her, but she started asking me how I found my boyfriend and why I think she can't get anyone who is her type. I didn't know what to say, so I just said she just had to keep looking. She was getting very upset and seemed to genuinely want help. She kept asking for advice and for me to be honest. Then she asked if I thought her standards were too high. I said maybe she should focus on her core needs mm. rather than looking mm. for a guy that ticks every box. She got annoyed at this and said I was telling her she should, she should settle and asked if I thought she was going above her level with the guys she was going for. I said that wasn't really what I said, but she saw through it and said I was basically saying she didn't deserve the guy she wants. I said, it's not a case of deserving. Everyone deserves what makes them happy, but it's whether you can find someone who's willing to give it to you. A relationship is two people and you're not entitled to one. Lisa snapped back that that was rich coming from me since I'm the most entitled person she's ever met. Uh -oh. And at this point, I was done with her whining and said at least I wasn't deluded about my prospects. Oh, no, you didn't. She left angry. This got around to our friends, and some think I'm right, but my closest friend said maybe I could have been a bit more gentle. My boyfriend said she needed to hear it because she was only making a fool of herself. AITA? Whoa. 
Yeah, I think I think this is an interesting one because I yeah. I think there are people. First of all, here's something I've noticed: people don't really like when you state too many standards. It's not very likable. I also don't think people like it when you use their time to complain about how you're single. Like that's something that I think comes up a lot mm. with friends. It's annoying. No one wants to be around that person. How is that fun? That's but, not fun. I mean, it's not fun. Complaining, uh, you know. Yeah. It's got to be funny complaining. Yeah, it's like funny. And then eventually, I feel like this is a young people do this a lot. I feel mm. like with the like, oh, I'm going to be single forever. I'm so old. And they're 25 and everything's <laughs> fine. <laughs> and they're fine. Everything is fine. Please do not mention that you're 25. Evania, have you, I mean, you must deal, do you, I mean, you must be a, a wisdom, a veritable treasure trove of wisdom in your friend group for this kind of thing. Um, I mean, I definitely, I think, I think most people shoot above their level right. in general. Like I, I was talking to my sister about this and she was like, yeah, everyone does that. Mm -hmm. And then she told me that I shoot below. <laughs> mm. Um, but yeah, I think like in general, I think this is especially true of men. Um, in my experience of what I've seen. Sure. Uh, like this kind of like shooting above your level or like being entitled sort of, feeling mm. entitled to um, a specific like physicality in a woman. Mm -hmm. um, but what was your question? If I see this with my friends? Well, yeah, how you, how you would broach this with male or, or female friends. You know, would you... I mean, this person... Look, this... I, I think... Let me say this. I think this cuts across. Sometimes I think people think that the hottest person they've ever slept with is the top of their range. And it's like, no, that person was willing to sleep with you. But that person probably isn't very likely going to settle down with you. You know, and I don't... Mm. Honestly, I, I think the other problem with this conversation is like... You know, I'm always preaching my gifts of mediocrity thing, which is like, I think that people who are insanely good looking tend to be like a little bit like, you know, they're used to a certain lifestyle. Also, we don't necessarily know, do we, that she's talking about like looking for the hottest guy? Like we're kind of assuming that and I sort of was too, but like, we don't know if she's like, my standards are that he needs to be like a certain income sure. or a certain education or a certain this or that or whatever. Well, I think those things are similar though, right? They're, they're, si they're superficial where like, you know, someone's yeah. saying like, oh, yeah. I need a guy who makes 200 grand and he's an engineer and it's like, yeah. okay, do you really need that specific of a thing? My thing is like your expectations or standards should be like whatever you offer. So like mm. if you offer this and you want to like find someone who matches that, yeah. that's totally fair. Sure. Um, Or if you like bring something else to the table that's like of equal value yeah that may be a little bit different um totally fair but i think if you're like i don't have this to offer someone but i'm looking for in a partner i think that's like kind of unfair i like that but i like that a lot i like to offer this though like standards according to who right mm. okay so she's like you're punching above her standards but nobody gets to set those standards but you is there a group of people right now that's looking at Danny and saying, Danny, this should be your standards besides your parents? <laughs> Everybody gets to decide what they deserve in their life. So I don't really like the idea of someone's punching up or going too big or too low because we can all point to tons of people that are like, how the fuck are they together? For whatever reason, that person believed they can be with that person. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. I think the reason it's like it sort of does hit a nerve with me a little bit is because... Um, I, I agree, first of all, that, like, everyone gets to set their own standards. Yeah. I do think, though, this person is, like, she's complaining, she's whining. The complaining asking, is not cool, for sure. She's asking for the person's opinion. Yeah. So, like, she gave it to her. She didn't like it, but she gave it to her. Totally. Right. Um, and that woman was, her friend is also, like, probably that's honestly what she thought. Like, you're yeah. trying, like, you're aiming too high. But what I have a problem with is that. We have seen so many times in movies, films, TVs, pretty, like, men who kind of have nothing going for them, <laughs> right. like, male character, older male characters who have right. nothing going for them, getting together with these, like, beautiful young actresses. And so every right. man thinks that that's what he deserves. That's where I get angry, and that's where I, it strikes a nerve for me, because, like, that's just, like, Hollywood propaganda. That's how you get to a five foot eight putting your name <laughs> on the speed dating board. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I, I, think, I think it goes, I think, I think the standards to me are important but I like what you said. So let me translate what you said to me, which is 
the state you're saying if I do it, then it's a reasonable expectation. Is that what you're saying about if you standards? Do what? In other words, if I want someone who's similar oh. to me, that's reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? Because yeah. like attract like, you yeah. know, they say opposites attract. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a question. Let's ask Jeeves. Jeeves, what do you think? <laughs> wow, okay, we're dating ourselves there. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I, I think that's reasonable. And I mean, look, I think, I think looks, I think people get very caught on looks. I think the apps have made that worse. And I've realized with yeah. time, not true. Not true about me even. And I, I think also that's another problem with standards in the apps is that it's very mechanized. It's sort of like, I like this kind of profile and this is good copy. It's very robotic. Whereas in real life, I've found myself very attracted to, you know, women that weren't immediately physically attractive to me. But then it's like their personality and their traits shine through. And I'm like, oh, my God. Those shark so pasties cool. get you. Ooh, the shark pasties send it. Just, no, but really, the, I, I think seduction, and I, and I use that not to mean like, you know, seducing someone, like forcing them to cheat on their wife. But more like the act of attracting another person and what makes someone really attractive is when someone is, you know, genuinely curious about you and interested about you and yeah. is caring and, and genuinely warm. Um, that's hot. Industriousness is very hot to me. Women who go out and get it. I love a woman with a small business, and I'm not just saying this to hit on you. Wow, well, this feels like a direct hit on. No, but I, I mean, I have friends, and I have a lot of friends who have little small businesses. I have a friend who has a little pet care business. I have a friend who does, like, face painting business. This like, is why I he think, runs a show at a juice shop. Mo no, more and more, I, I'm finding that men are, like, I'm really attracted to women who, like, are bosses or, like, go-getters who, like, are can really stand on their own two feet. And it's, like, it's a really interesting thing when we're also kind of talking about sort of like the trad wife thing that's taking over as well. And like, there's like this, like being in your feminine and mm. it's like, it, it's kind of interesting to see how that all balances out and like kind of people dividing into two different sex and like not sex as in C E S E. Uh, we got it. We got okay. it. Um, but just like, yeah, I think, I think that's an interesting conversation too. And also like <sighs> us women are tired. <laughs> We're I think, so well, tired. there's a lot of pressure. I mean, I, I think, I think they're not, I don't think the industriousness where it's like, oh, you know, you need to, you need to be a trad wife and you need to have yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Be. Um, that was weird because that's a business for a child, but whatever. Well, sure that is, uh, yeah, did you ever have a lemonade stand? Uh, uh, no, no, but I did some, I remember I always wanted to sell snow. That was a concept I was very heavily invested <laughs> in. in. Surprisingly, it didn't do well. Oh, actually that, that, that would do really well. well yeah. yeah, I know. I didn't can afford the snow machine. Yellow snow? Um, yeah, right. <laughs> I can't help but just keep going back to the age thing, though, because I really do think for guys, I'll speak for myself, the looks and the standards of the quote looks, it, it, it becomes less and less important as you get older because you realize like you're going to be there with the person. Yeah, the looks are the way in. For sure. I'm not going to yeah. approach somebody, but it's it's absolutely not what would keep somebody me interested in somebody. There's a drunkenness that comes yeah. with a beautiful there's a, woman. There's a male that drunkenness that still exists for sure. It's very powerful. It's it's overpowering. It's utterly intoxicating. <laughs> um, you know, but that said, sobriety will kick in. It will kick in. I think number one thing is going to be conversation. Can we have a good conversation? Because that to me is going to be the bread and butter. But anyway, let's go back to the situation. I think my issue here. We didn't get in. We didn't get into what this person actually thinks, or, or what her yeah. standards actually are. Right. I I think you know going a little bit at the standards might be okay in a questioning manner, right? To say, hey, for you know what, I could go to a job with a lot of these questions, right? If I were to say, like, you know, Brendan, do you really need a job that pays two hundred fifty thousand dollars? Like, it, aren't there other aspects to a job that are more important? That feels reasonable. That feels like I'm questioning a specific standard. I'm kind of getting you to question your values. However, I feel like this OP, and correct me if I'm wrong, kind of came at this with a way that was saying your standards are too high. And I don't think that's actually appropriate to tell a friend. I have a much darker question that I would have asked the OP's friend I would have asked. I would say, do you want to be happy? Because it sounds like you don't. Because this girl is just, her friend is just constantly complaining. And I feel like even if she found that guy, she would still feel the same way. She would way. still find issues. Yeah. She's like having a There's thing. deeper issues in that. And like the fact that she's like, what do you mean I don't have high standards? Like she she wanted to have this conversation. Or what do you mean that I have high standards? So that's how I see it. I think it's a deeper thing than just the guys. I hear you. I think that, I think that 
there were a lot more tactful and sensitive ways for the friends to friend to approach it, which kind of makes me think like she just kind of wanted to be a bitch. Like that's sort of like, <laughs> it was like she's just like I just want to like honestly think because that's like fair. for me, whenever yeah. I've had someone talk about like this is what I want, I want this, this, and this. What I do is I say, okay, like let's say. They're like, I want someone who is in this, in like medicine or a doctor. Or like, I want someone with this income. I just try and dig deeper with them of like, what's that? What are you actually asking for? Maybe it's like security. Maybe Mm. it's a certain level of education. Maybe it's like, maybe it's because you want to be able to connect on something specific. And so when you get to like the deeper thing that they want, that is the thing that can help them open up their pool a little bit. And I also think instead of just saying like, your standards are too high, she she could have been like, oh, like, I know you want, like, this, but what about this guy who was interested in you? Right. Like, it was no, has right. no one ever been interested in, in your friend? Like, right. why couldn't you have focus on the positive instead and, like, sort of tried to nudge her of, like, because I think, like, when you're when you're the only single friend in your friend group, like, it is frustrating and it, it does totally. feel dark at times. Like, it does feel, like, bad. And so, like, why not be like, okay, like, like I'll go out with you like this weekend and like let's yeah. go I'll be your wing woman why why was she just kind of like immediately like negative I think it's because she just let her complaining about it so much build up and so she's like I'm just unleashing now you yeah. know what I mean I think that she wanted to nip this in the bud a long time ago and she just didn't yeah. do it because she was like okay and I I've heard this a lot from people be like my friend never stops complaining about how they're single and and I could see why that could be grating for sure because no one wants to hear anybody complain about the same thing forever. I don't care what it is. It's yeah. not that fun. That's fair. That's a pretty good defense, you know, but but Lisa did and Lisa did take a nasty little fire back calling OP the most entitled person she's ever met. I want to know like more. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> wow, that was see there was like all this build up that just came fucking unleashing that at feels the like end. That's a hot shot, you yeah. know what I mean? I don't know if I buy that. That said, I do think a much healthier way would have been to just say like, hey, look, Lisa, I, I'm sorry you're single, but I just don't have space for this kind of yeah. venting. It's getting really annoying, you know, I, or like, well, you don't want to say it's annoying. You could just say like, can can you find someone else to complain about this? I just don't want to hear it anymore. I'm sorry. I like to be very action oriented. Like, oh, you're having this problem? Like, let's solve it. Oh, that's great. That's another way to handle venting. I don't necessarily think that might be what the other person is looking for, but I'm not against that. Nonetheless, I do think OP fired a personal attack and was basically communicating, and it was read accurately by Lisa, that basically what she was being told is, you're going above your level. And I think (laughs) that is not something you should tell another person. You just shouldn't. Not your friend, too. Not your friend. I'll tell you. Your arm is blocking the camera, dumbass. Okay. Okay. This podcast is above your level. Uh, (laughs) No, but like... Yeah, I just I, I think I think this is a fool's errand to communicate this to someone. You want to put your friends up. I think like, look, it can be hard to tell. I mean, believe it or not, beautiful women women have settled for me. <laughs> can you believe that, people? Woo! Believe that. Uh, not that expensive either. I just did a chargeback with my bank. So, <laughs> no, but like, I, I I think I think I think honestly, OP struck first, and Lisa did strike back. But I, honestly, I think it was a low blow, and I think you're reading it right, Brendan. I think it was kind of like Ugh, she's always complaining, and it's just like she's delusional, yeah. and it's like. Yeah, that's annoying, but that doesn't mean you get a fire shot at her. And for these reasons, I actually, when I hear AITA for telling my friend she's delusional about our dating prospects, I'm kind of a not YTA. YTA, that's where I'm at. But she said, she asked if I thought her standards were too high. Um, Okay, hold on. Is that true? She said all the guys wanted to hook up, blah, 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 blah. Try to comfort her. Why can't I get one of the? Yeah. I don't know what to say. So I just said she had to keep looking. She was getting very upset and seemed to genuinely want help. So she kept asking for advice and for me to be honest. Then she asked if I thought her standards were too high. I said maybe she should focus on her core needs. She got annoyed at this and said I was telling her she should settle and asked if I thought she was going above her level. Oh, you're right. Okay. Verdict shift. Well done, Evunia. Thank you. AITA for telling my friend she's delusional about her dating prospects. Now I'm actually reading this as Lisa is a complainer and basically she wanted to be the victim. She forced this conversation to happen. She put OP in a box. I kind of feel that way too. NTA and Lisa is. 
and then fired back at least. We all know, we know people who have done this to us. They like set a trap for you and then you fall into the trap and you're like, how could you do this? Yeah, I'm kind of no assholes here, but yeah, if I had to pick one, I would say it's actually. I, I would maybe also gear it towards no assholes. No, guys. So then, no, 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 no <laughs> then we're fighting. Let's so, fight. I want this. Okay. So we agree that Lisa essentially got OP to say that, right? Do we agree on that? I do agree. I think, Okay. Lisa coerced OP. But I think, like, sometimes, like, you just kind of have to see people for where they're at. And, like, she's going through a hard time. Sure. She's going through a hard time. But the issue is she kept asking for advice and for me to be honest. Imagine I did that to you. Let me go to you right now. Be honest with me. Why don't I have a girlfriend? Why don't I have a girlfriend? Because you're asking me multiple times in a row and not letting me speak. And you probably do that on (sighs) dates. (laughs) He does tell oh really long stories. Oh, my God. He tells really long oh stories that, that have no ending. Oh, my God. What's what? Which story? I was just joking about the your one, dating experience, story. weirdo. Oh God, I'm deleting your OnlyFans. <laughs> um, no, that's why we're saying she's not an asshole because she, she, she kept asking. So the friend she, is not an asshole for telling her. Yes. OP is not an asshole. Yeah. But then Lisa says... Oh, no. So you just, what did you just say? You said that I don't let my dates talk. And then I say, okay, well, Evunia, that's a personal insult. So you're really saying that I don't know what I'm doing on dates. You know what? You're the most entitled person I know. Come on. Now I'm attacking (laughs) you. Lisa's the asshole. If I had to pick one, it would be Lisa for sure. Yeah, I can live with that. Uh, But I, I, yeah, I don't like it. I would give her an empathetic asshole, like an empathetic YTA. Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> it's just misplaced anger. You guys yeah. are annoying. AITA for telling my friend she's losing my damn prospects. I guess we technically agree. Like, YTA, Evinia made up you're the empathetic <laughs> asshole. I don't know what the fuck that means. No, we're empathetic to why she's an asshole. Yeah. That, yeah. Well, I've been single for three years. What do you guys fucking know? How long have you been single? 2001? Uh, no. <laughs> 9-11. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, it was a weird day. Uh, that was a weird day. <laughs> it was a weird we all have up. empathy yeah. to spare. We can give it to you. We can give it to her. We can give it... To, do you have empathy to spare? No, I'm okay. actually... I put, I'm, I'm walled off. I That's feel like you've become more empathetic the more I do this podcast. Initially, I was like, whoa, this guy draws some hard lines. Well, I don't have empathy. Well, for the situations, I can like role play and see them in my head and play them. That's fine. But when people are coming to me now, people in their 30s, coming to me with problems i'm not gonna let that drawbridge down yeah you stay on your side of the moat that's not my problem. i think for me i would have tapped out of this lisa friendship i would have backed away for a while because i couldn't i just don't have time for someone complaining about how they're single that much yeah i mean funny there's funny complainers yeah but if you're not a funny complainer i got very limited you know i'm setting a timer Wow. I'm saying it's time. Well, the thing with you is what you said was great is like action oriented. Complaining is the opposite of being action oriented. Yes. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying is I think Lisa actually just wants to be upset. If she really wanted to change, she wouldn't keep talking about it constantly. I get why she's doing this. We all do some version of this or have for sure. But that's what I'm saying. There's no action in it. It's just like single guys suck. Sorry. Or, yeah. <laughs> we just played hockey with my coffee. <laughs> you just slap shot it. You just San Jose oh, shark. Yeah, you just San Jose hockey. sharks my coffee. <laughs> but that's what I mean. And that's why eventually I'm like, I don't feel bad for you. Yeah, we all need to vent sometimes. And I get yeah, that. Yeah, venting's it's fine. Like, it gets to a point where you're like, okay, like, let's solve it now. And if let's you're not willing it, to, let's then take like, some steps. Yeah. I think, I think that's what I'm trying to say. I, there's no unlimited venting pass with me. I, yeah. I'm actually, yes, if somebody 100%. asks me for help, if Brennan's like, dude, I really need help with um, my OnlyFans, I would actually love to help with, Is there any marketing with, help? with, marketing, yeah. with digital marketing. You know what I mean? Love that. Can't wait. That's I'm just on LinkedIn. <laughs> What's that? I'm just on LinkedIn. You're just on LinkedIn. Yeah. All right, we're gonna wrap things up here. That was a good one. Um, we're going to joke town on this, but it's a joke and it involves dating. A I T A for joking. I'm dating the wrong friend. Ooh, Wait, I already what? like this. I've been with my GF for about six months. We started hanging out with groups of people, introducing each other to them, being more quote unquote official. Last night was my turn to meet my GF's friends. She was actually invited to a friend's birthday get together and the friend had told her to bring me as well. At the event, another girl, Beth, was there too. She's a friend of the birthday girl, but not of my girlfriend. Uh-oh. In fact, my GF doesn't particularly like her, saying she has a habit of bad-mouthing people. And the common friend, birthday girl, has implied in the past that Beth has done the same thing mm. to my GF. Well, we were at a restaurant and me and my GF happened to sit across from Beth. My GF doesn't do red meats or red wine, opting for white wine and seafood mostly. <laughs> 
well, I'm a huge steak and red wine guy. And when Beth ordered the same thing, I joked, huh, guess I'm dating the wrong friend. I could <laughs> feel the temperature drop on my GF side. And when we got home, she lashed at me for saying that. And of all people, to Beth, I told her, it's not that big of a deal. It's just a joke. And she said I could have made any other joke. And now Beth would probably talk shit about how, quote unquote, her BF liked me. All over town. <laughs> town. I think this is well, yeah. Where's this town? <laughs> petty girl drama, but I do feel bad for making her feel bad. Aita. I'm gonna let you start. I mean, listen, I have thrown out some failed jokes before, so I kind of sympathize with this guy. Failed jokes are my bread and butter. Yeah, maybe. like he was probably nervous, so I feel for him a little bit. It was not the smartest thing to say. I do think that for sure. I will say, I think this is a flirt, and that oh, is an error. I think this is a flirt. It's a light flirt. It's not crazy. It's not calling anybody hot. It's not saying you want to fuck anyone, but it is flirtatious. It yeah. just is. You know, if it was a gay guy saying it, whatever, but, like, it, it's a flirtatious line. It's cute. It's kind of a banger, but you can't be flirting with your girl's uh, kind of arch nemesis. nemesis. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, even if he had said it and it was just like her friend, it would still have been not the move. I think, yeah, I mean, I think it could fly. I think some, you wouldn't be comfortable with that. I, that's little, like not the dating really thing. funny. That's it's not, not I'm not, yeah. I never once said my, it was How funny. can my dad make this joke then? <laughs> Your dad what? <laughs> my dad would make this joke. Yeah, 100%. Like my grandpa would say some Yeah, crazy yeah but I think like, like coming that. from like an old grandpa is different <laughs> than like. Yeah, I'm dating the wrong girl. All right. And he's yeah, saying you've been like there for like woman. 70. And so, like, yeah, he's married to his wife. I married yeah. the wrong woman. I'm married. Yeah, I think, I think this to me is you don't, you don't fuck with Beth. There ain't nothing to say to Beth. You kind of got to give her a little bit of coldness. Yeah. There's a there's an issue there. I I think there's a thing like you know you don't if you're dating someone or whatever you're in an intimate relation with someone you don't have to take on the exact alliances and enemies. I think that would be unreasonable. I would never demand that. But in front of them, play right. it kind of neutral. That's when you go Switzerland mode and you're like, "Hi, Beth." Yeah, you don't want to say, "I want to date your nemesis." In front of her. Because she likes <laughs> red wine red and red wine. meat. <laughs> red it's also like such a funny thing to be excited about. Like, oh, you like red wine too? We should be married. It's insane. Have you ever dropped a line like this in front of I've a said girl? some very dumb shit. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I have a stand-up joke about a line that I didn't say. I okay. have developed the prefrontal cortex to not say it, but it was New Year's, and my um, my girlfriend's best friend was Preg, Pregs. And as the, you know, 10 seconds to the, uh, what's that called when the ball countdown. drops? Countdown. She looks to her husband, and she just goes, oh, my God, it's going to be our last year without kids because she was pregnant. And uh, what I wanted to say was, well, you never know, but I didn't. I didn't say it. Oh, like they might not have the kid, right? That's the joke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't say it. I was a good boy. I don't think that that's that bad. So I had a sketch that I wrote that I wanted to make that never got made. It was called "Hey, Who's That?" and it's a dating app where on everybody's profile you get to swipe up, swipe on their hot friend. Because <laughs> I feel like every time you're swiping on the apps, you're like, yeah, but who's that? If a girl... When a girl sandwiches yes. herself with all these hot women, you're like, no, but who's that? Dude, if there's a group pick as her main pick, that's a swipe left. You know immediately, okay. Immediately. I've stopped going on the apps, but I remember thinking that a lot on the apps. I'm like, well, who's that? But, you know, Beth is in real life, and she's... I don't think... You think he was actually into Beth? That's the no, vibe. I think it was a throwaway joke. It was a throwaway dad joke. I don't, I don't think he was trying to fuck Beth. I think. Yeah. I mean, has this happened to you? Have you been the victim of a joke like this? Have you made a joke like this? Um, no, but like I feel, I don't consider myself really a jealous person, but mm. I still wouldn't have liked this. Um, not just be, mostly like I think the frenemy aspect is a huge part of it, but I think even if it was like, I think if it was like. I don't know. I think it still would have been like a, an awkward thing to say because I'm just like imagining like if if it was me, if like I was out with one of my friends and their partners and their partner said that about me, I would feel really uncomfortable. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I guess if it was like a, a friend group you were familiar with, but yeah, I, I, these seem like distant friends. Uh, obviously, they're frenemies, yeah. but it doesn't seem like this is like a close best friend. Yeah, you shouldn't really be flirting with your girlfriend's friends. It's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah. Well, I think like a little – like being friendly or whatever is fine. It's just like specifically saying I, I, I'm i dating the wrong person. It's flirting. It's, it's like it's very – speci- it's like a – it's a dig. It's a dig and a yeah. flirt. It's really the worst of all worlds. Yeah. Yeah, you just – his GF, it was like that was probably her worst nightmare and he just yeah. unleashed it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I could see that. And I think if there's any kind of like – mistrust or any insecurity in the relationship like that would have just made it so Mm. much worse i just had a flashback because i was trying to think of a memory when i've hit on a girlfriend's friend or something and i remember one time (laughs) god it was me and her like couple friends and I don't know what was going on. It was like a pheromone thing or something. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck it was. There was nothing said inappropriate, but I was like, she wants to fuck me and I want to fuck her right now. Her friend? Yeah. 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 And it was like an over, it was like an overwhelming feeling, like where it was all I could think about. Nothing was said or anything. It was just like knowing glances or something, but it wasn't like an obvious thing that I could explain at all. But it, the feeling in me was so strong and so unique that I was like, it, there must be something mutual going on here. Maybe she just had allergies. <laughs> <laughs> My brain is like, that's what she wants. I don't know. But I, I'm, I'm trying to think. I mean, I'm sure. I, I have sh- actually. I just thought of something. Here we go. You want to hear it? Yeah. yeah I was dying. insulted. I'm it dying. was. Oh. It felt so awful. Oh. Um, so this wasn't even someone I was dating. It was someone that I had uh, dated um, when I was young, when I was like 17. And, oh, in years later, we met up for drinks. Um, it was me and some of his friends. And it wasn't, like, in a dating way. It was just, like, to catch up. And I had a friend who's now my, my ex-friend, but we were really close. And let's just call her um, – let's call her Bernice in this story. Okay. okay. So Bernice and I have – very different looks. Um, so anyways, I go to meet up with this guy and his friends and he, um, his friend, his, his friend, when I sit down immediately goes, Oh my God, you guys have kissed, which is like such a funny thing to say to someone as soon as they sit down. Oh wow! (laughs) And we were like, what? And he was like, yeah, I can tell. Hmm. Oh wow. And, and, um, so anyways, like they start chatting like to each other about me. While I'm sitting there, where the friend is like, oh, she's no. like really good looking. She's gorgeous. And what? This, this guy goes. That's wild. No, no, no. That's not the wild part. The wild part is that the guy, the one I had dated goes, yeah, but you should see her friend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Oh, no. Wow. No. And I was like, I, I was just sitting there like, what am I doing here? Holy I, <laughs> like, shit. What an awful thing to say oh, while I'm like, sitting gosh. right here. God. And we just like look so different that it's like clearly you have a type and I wasn't it. But yeah. like, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm like, that's messed me up. Me and Danny are really bummed out. <laughs> We're mean. both just sad. No, you never say you should see. That's like the worst we don't, you thing. You never to say. touch a woman's looks. If there's one thing I've learned, oh my you, God. You, you, you say only positive things. That's a law of the universe, right? I mean, don't touch that shit. Yeah, and it was, I don't even, it wasn't even like he or was the insulting friend me. It was just like Never. immediately jumped to comparison. No, when like you don't there was do that. no reason to bring her up. She wasn't right. meeting up with us. Right. Like she had nothing oh to do with God. anything. Yeah. <laughs> so the guy that you, you you used to date said that. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> you know what? He was probably hurt by something that happened with you. I'm not defending him. I feel like you're defending him. But I'm just, no, I'm just trying to think about why he would even, I'm trying to just think about why he would even begin to do that. I think, like, I just think that she, like, because he's married now and his wife oh. looks more like her than me. Mm. And, like. no, oh, well. He's just mad and got second place. <laughs> yeah, I think he's mad. So I took a pot I'm not defending him, but <laughs> I think. Thank you, Brennan. Don't defend him. <laughs> no, but I'm just like, I'm literally trying to get in his head, like, why would you even begin to say that? Sounds like a random, well, it's a random put down. He's a piece it was, of yeah, shit. Just a, yeah, it's just a random, it like, it's a random neg. He sucks. Yeah, but that's not, it's like and the that, worst kind of neg. Yeah. Yeah. That's not even. I mean, and you have called me out on my nags, and I've been very conscious now. I'm very careful. There. Sometimes they work, though. Yeah, but that's the whole is that point. True? Yeah, sometimes nags work, work, right? 
I'm not saying yours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying sometimes they do work on girls, right? It's not like they're all don't work. Sometimes girls like that shit. Really? Yeah. Like Within what? reason. Like I don't what? know. What are you saying? You... You're a piece of shit. What are you saying to these yeah, women? Yeah, you're a piece of shit. What are you and I'm not to, paying. What you, <laughs> that's what I say. Like, uh, it shows. Never, well, I mean, I, I had written down another speed dating experience where I, you know, because I, I medical is kind of a deal breaker for me. I'm not Medi- medical oh, people. I thought you meant someone who has, like, needs to go to the doctor. Somebody who has health insurance <laughs> yeah. is a huge deal well, breaker. I thought it was, like, someone who has, like, health issues. No, well, see, here's my issue with health issues. Don't bring that up. Don't huh. bring it up. It's not uh, relevant. Yeah. I mean, if you could touch on it, that's fine. Early like, on? Ever? Don't bring it up early on, or if you're going to bring it up, touch on it, that's fine. If you're just like, yeah, I got, you know, I got diabetes or whatever, you know, whatever. Can I say what I, I don't want to hear ever again yeah, in L.A.? It. People talking about their diets. I just don't care. Unless it's relevant to the restaurant we're eating at, I don't care. I'm so anyways, that. you guys, um, I'm on this new diet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's yeah. so L.A. You specific. You should get on the one that your friend's on. Yeah. That's what, sorry, <laughs> was that too soon? Okay. No, that was a nick. That was an uh, It's just so uh, LA. I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm just, I hang out with a lot of girl comma friends. I've realized don't, don't bring it. Don't bring me to a heavy place early on. That's a big, that's going to set red, red flags off right away. Mm. Now, if you touch on it, that's fine. A little touch and go is okay. You know, I don't mind if someone says something like that early on. I'd rather have that than be like, I'm off gluten. I'm like, oh, fucking you and everyone else. You're just sick of diets. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Anyway, I think this was a, a shitty joke. Yeah, it wasn't it, great. It was you don't flirt with your friend, your your girlfriend's friends. That's you're just begging for trouble. You're begging for trouble. Yeah. I think her response was weird though too. Like she was like, "It's gonna be spread around all over town." Like she didn't focus on Thomas. it just being hurtful for her, but instead it was like about how rumors are gonna get out. Yeah. What year is this? What town? <laughs> I think number one conflict rule that people break is just stick to yourself. Yeah. I felt hurt when you said that. A shocking number of people struggle to say something that simple. Yeah. Mm. Stick to yourself. Don't attack me. Don't blow it up. Don't talk about Beth spreading it all over town. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody gives a shit. Also, you guys heard the term don't go global. Do you know no. that one? Don't use words like always, like you always do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because no, always or never. Because it bad. absolutes the thing and it's called going global and it like blows the whole thing up. And if you're trying it on me, I'll object. You always make jokes and hit on my friends at dinner. And he's, and he's like, I do actually do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Objection>. Foundation. <Yeah. laughs> um, anyway, I think we're lined up here. AITA for joking, I'm dating the wrong friend. I think you got to read the room on this, brother. Sorry, dog. You can't be making this joke to that friend, that friend of me. I think yeah. we're all lined up. YTA. Yeah, bro. Evinia, plug away. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, you can check out my music on Spotify or anywhere you get your music, but obviously Spotify is amazing. And we're here in Spotify. Yes. We're at Spotify Studio. Um, and it's it's my name. It's E-V-Y-E-N-I-A is the artist's name. That's it. Oh, that's it. Just add yeah. me mm-hmm. I'm excited to hear your music. Uh, you can follow me at the underscore Brennan Fitzgibbons and Big Dog B on OnlyFans. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love the handle you chose for us. Just made that up. All right, guys. That's the show. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye.